this video we'll be looking at how we can set the backgrounds for our eBeam scrapbook. The first thing to do is right click on the work area and you'll see third from the bottom it says background settings. This brings up our background settings toolbar and there are three options that we have. Either we can choose colors, solid or gradient, or we can load up backgrounds either from pictures or from the clipboard or the last one is we can use grid or lines. So let's have a look at the individual ones. Let's start with color. So what I need to do is select the color that I'm going to go use and make the choice. Either it's going to be solid or it's going to be gradient. And solid is one single color. So I'm going to choose a bright color for effect. As you can see that is rather bright. Personally I wouldn't use that during the lesson. It will cause a lot of strain on the student's eyes. So let's go change it. Once again, right click, background settings, back to my edit, and I choose a softer color. There we have a very light green. So that's a solid color. Now we can't go and undo a background settings. What you need to do is go and deselect the background that you've chosen if you do not want it anymore. Or you could simply delete the page and make a new page. So I'm going to right click, click on background settings, and I can simply switch it off and click OK and there will be no background. If we go back to the color section there's a gradient and this allows me to change it from one color to another color and that is the color. Let's have a look at the options for an image. Firstly we can load a background so that's an image we've saved somewhere on our computer that we can use or we can load it from the clipboard. The clipboard is a term that's used on our computer when we copy something. So if we go and we use the camera tool and we capture a picture it'll be saved in the clipboard. If we copy a picture that'll be saved on the clipboard. So whatever the last image was on your clipboard it will use. So I'm going to go and load a background. And here I have two images that I'd like to use an animal cell and a plant cell. Now on the right hand side you'll see do not scale which keeps it at its original size, scale proportionately which makes it slightly bigger, scale to fit which stretches it so it fits in the whole picture or we could have tile repeat. Tile repeat is a lot of little images of the same picture over and over and over. We can use that for effect with smaller objects but when we want to use a picture like this it's best to scale proportionally or scale to fit. So let's have a look see. Now you can see I have this as a background. I cannot move it. The students can come up and they can access this picture. They can label it, underline, circle, discuss and so forth. But I'm unable to move that. Let's go back and have a look at the do not scale. So there you will see it's considerably smaller. That's the actual size of my picture. So when I put it on there, it's quite small, which will be really hard for the students to see. The next setting was scale to fit. Click OK. And there you can see the picture has been stretched a little. So if your picture is high quality and it doesn't go out of proportion too much, that's a good option. Another setting on there is the transparency. If I take my transparency down to the middle, you can see in the preview what's happening to the picture. It's becoming lighter. So if I don't want it to be so dominant, I want it to be a softer background picture, I can click OK and you'll notice it's slightly softer. Therefore the students can come and write up on it. We could also use this for templates or themes. So if we've got an axis or we've got a certain picture that's following our theme, we're doing a writing theme or a numbers theme and we put a nice little picture in the background, we can make it quite soft so that we can come and write over it during our lesson. And the last button here is to remove the image. So if I don't want that image I can click remove and that image will be gone from my background. Let's have a look at the last section, grid or lines. We have two options. We can either have a grid or a line. So once we select it we can have a small grid or a large grid or we could have small lines which are close together or large lines which are further apart. The line width that tells us the thickness of the line. One pixel is extremely small while if we scroll down 10 pixels is thick thick lines and if I click OK 
you'll see the thickness of the line. I'm going to change that quickly and you'll be able to see the difference. So the line width tells me how thick my lines are going to be. The two other parts that I could change are the color of the lines. So if I wish to make them a different color, I can click OK and that'll change the color of the lines or I could change the transparency again, making it thinner so it doesn't stick out as much. We click OK, it's really thin down the bottom. And those are the three components that we use to make our backgrounds. Most people would use the line background to replicate the books that the students are using. Other teachers would use the background, the image background a lot more. Keep it varied, it keeps the students from getting bored. Add in those images and remember the transparency is a good way to do it. A quick recap, we can right click anywhere on the work area or if you want to access the background, you can click on page and go down to background settings. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Technology Training Academy.